Welcome to another edition of BTV Live and it's a special one as well because this show is all about you at home and on Facebook. This is your opportunity to ask the questions that you want to know and get the answers that you're looking for from head coach Leon McDonald. He'll be joining us very, very shortly. And one other player that's turning heads in the competition and moving a lot of bodies is Tom Robinson. He'll be joining us as well after a massive uh, outing uh, last Saturday against the Highlanders where the Blues went back-to-back -back wins. And also one thing that is uh, really, really important in the season 2019 is around mandatory stand-down. And that's our first guest who's going to shed some light and basically break it down into layman's terms to find out exactly how that's going to play out for the remainder of the 2019 season. We are joined by Tony Hanks, GM of High Performance. Tony, thank you very much for joining us. No problem at all. Now, for me, especially because I am an absolute simpleton, but for <coughs> everybody out there, for the rugby fans, from your guys' perspective, what is if can you break down the key points of this mandatory stand down period for the remainder of the season? Yeah, sure. Look, the, the All Black integration and management is nothing new. Um, it's certainly got a lot more um, face time and, and media time this year, maybe because it's World Cup. Effectively, uh, a group of 32 elite All Blacks were selected at the end of last year, mm. uh, of which we have five. Uh, so the first thing they uh, was they didn't play pre-season. Their first game was round one. And over the first three games of the season, they were <clears throat> restricted to 180 minutes over those first three games. Uh, then through the rest of the season, we have to give them, they'll have two weeks off. And those are two uh, clear weeks away. So where they, they're basically away from the environment, plus the two buys that are already in our, in our draw. So just to clarify that, when you mean away from the environment, that extends further than just not lacing up on the weekend and having a run. Yeah, I think the whole thing is to get away, freshen up. It's a long season. Look, we're, we're all invested in our All Blacks doing well at the end of the year. Uh, look, player management, I think because the you use the word mandatory around the All Blacks and, and there are high-profile players, they, they get a lot of the attention. But I think any good club's going to try and manage their squad as well as they can. Um, you know, it's Super Rugby's tough now. Yeah. You know, the, the, the requirements of uh, uh, on the players now, the physicality of the game means it's pretty hard for anyone to play you know, right through the whole season. Um, so we, we need to manage all our guys uh, best we can. And one of the key ones in the points is that no player can play more than five consecutive games. So as we start to approach a real crunch period for the Blues, good couple of wins now, and then there's a couple of big games coming up, uh, so the back-to-backs uh, -back at Mount uh, Eden Park with the Stormers and the Waratahs coming up very shortly. Who, I guess, are some of the players that will probably be coming up for that stand-down period? Yeah, it's a real hard one because you look at the draw and Super Rugby is no easy games. <clears throat> so you're trying to balance in terms of, you know, who can complement who. Um, you know, injuries obviously, and sometimes it's not injuries necessary to the All Blacks, it's injuries to your other players. The five games sort of guideline um, around sort of consecutive games was more around so that we didn't leave it all till the end. Sure. Um, and that we were sort of managing our players as well as we could through the season. As you've seen, uh, Patrick, Offa and Sonny have, have already had one game off. So Carl and Rico will be due in, in the coming weeks. Uh, then we go into a bye. Our, our draw worked really well around the, the five-game block. And then we'll look to, to give all those guys a, another game off in our, our long block after the next bye. I can imagine, imagine running a club uh, like the Blues is, is complex. For this period, is there like a matrix on a wall that's already predetermined as to how you're going to plan all of this out and all working with the coaching staff? Or is it based on a week-by-week -week period? depending on how things shape up oh, and player welfare that you we, make those decisions? We, we've, we've had a few matrix um, that, that we've changed because situations change. Um, and obviously, as we've learned, there's, there's things that are bigger than rugby. Um, you know, obviously, Sonny was due to play last week with, with everything that happened in Christchurch. And for him, it was the right week for him to have off. So I think we've all got flexibility that we can adjust. We have sort of, I suppose, a, a best case scenario. Mm -hmm. But as we know, Super Rugby, you, you never get that best case. Um, so there's a little bit of flexibility and movement around it. But if you've got a plan, at least you've, you've got something you can work to and something you can adjust from. And probably just one other question just around that. If a player uh, out of the five is injured, can that be treated as, a, as one of those standout periods or no? Yeah, look, we, we've been fortunate. Um, our, our Medfit team have done a great job with our guys. So we haven't faced that yet. Um, I think that's something that we would manage if it, if it came up, um, especially if it was just a, a one week, because it depends when that injury occurs, does it take them out of the environment, all those sorts of things. But I guess the, the message from me is, is our intent is to look after our players best we can anyway. It's in our own interest. We want those five All Blacks and the rest of our team playing well when it comes to playoffs at the end of the year.
Excellent. Tony, thank you so much for that breakdown. It is clear. As, and look, it will be uh, interesting again how everything all lines up for the next coming ba battles uh, for the Blues in the, the next period before the bye. So we're looking forward to it. No problem at all. Excellent. Thanks very much. Tony. And just to confirm again, if we have a look at that schedule, next Saturday it is the Stormers and they will be going head to head with the Blues at 7.35 on Saturday night and that's followed up. They're currently sitting in sixth place on the ladder and that's followed up by another massive clash at Eden Park against the Waratahs on April 6th, again 7.35 on Saturday night. As I mentioned at the top of BTB, this was your opportunity to ask the questions to the man himself, who's in charge of the entire operation, who makes the big calls. Leon McDonald, head coach of the Blues, thank you very much for joining us on BTB. Pleasure to be here. Now look, uh, I can imagine, as a fan watching the game, it was awesome on Saturday, but as a coach, I bet it was stress levels were at 100. What was it like in their coaching box in the last five minutes of the game? Yeah, it was intense in the coaching box. I think I got caught on camera maybe um, with a few explicit words. So um, <clears throat> it was a fantastic game. It ebbed and flowed, and, and to be able to, to, to squeeze home on top was uh, a great feeling. Ken, uh, in regards to that win, I mean, a lot was made off that it would broke a 20-game duck against another New Zealand team. Do you treat that as any more of a significant achievement or is that just another step in a long, tough 2019 road? Oh, look, I think it, it was good for our confidence. I think we've been doing a lot right and haven't quite had those things going our way, you know, the result that is. So um, good for the belief. Um, we knew that we could win, win that game, including every game, we, you know, we go out there to, to do well, but uh, to do it in front of a home crowd was extra special. It was a, a real gutsy performance towards the back end of, of the... Um, of the 80 minutes and yet there's a couple of other games of pre um, prior to that where it could have gone that way as well but it mm. didn't so is this kind of the linchpin that gets potentially the Blues over the mark in these tight situations that you guys are back yourself to come home with a dub? Oh look I think it definitely helped with our belief and, and whether that's the turning point or not we'll, we'll find out over the next coming weeks but it's definitely set us up nicely we've got a couple of home games um, again so that helps you know with with us being in our own beds and training at home makes life easier so uh, you know it's, it's just a great opportunity for us now to, to try and repeat that again this week. It is looking forward to what will be another big big clash at Eden Park but that's enough of my questions this whole segment is about you there on Facebook live where you get to fire yours through so we've got a few here uh, and the first question is Swetha and Ashmita Singh have asked and I don't think this is just exclusive to tonight from what I understand it's been asked almost on a weekly basis hey Leon can we try at 12 Sunny Bill and 13 Ma'anonu oh look it's definitely something we, we'll look at at some point both um, Sunny and Ma preferred positions 12 there's no doubt about that um, Mars had a little bit of time at 13 uh, hasn't played a lot there since since a long time ago so um, you know I think at some point in the in upcoming weeks we'll see those two together just on the top of that though how good is it to have that luxury where you've got players all in that midfield and outside backs that everybody's firing it must be hard to try and find places for people yeah, well, we're seeing some um, some guys are really starting to find some form. You know, you can go right through, um, you know, the back line is, and guys are starting to stand up, which is great. And, um, you know, your, your, your key players, your more experienced players, when they stand up, your team generally will go well. So it was, it, that was probably the most pleasing thing in the weekend was our, our big, big name players really put their hand up and play well. Oh, that was a question from Swetha and Ashmeda. Now, Byron Engs asks, when can we expect uh, Stephen Pedofita back? Well, Stevie's been unfortunate. He's had a significant injury to his his pectoral, so um, he, he required an operation, and um, he's ho hopefully fingers crossed back just before the end of the season. So um, we hopefully see him in the Blues jersey again this season. Excellent. Keep those questions coming through. Robert Stewart asks, Will Jordan Trainer get a run for the Blues? Uh, Jordan's another one in the um, in the injury category. So he's been unfortunate with a number of injuries actually the, um, through the preseason and. Um, and unfortunately he's, he's struggling away trying to rehab back and it's been a, a frustrating time for, for Jordan so fingers crossed we see him on the, on the field soon. Uh, there's another question here from Brittany Longroom. Uh, how does Tom like the Blues environment? Tom, which Tom we do? We've got a few Toms. Tom. Oh, I imagine it'd be a big source over there that will be joining, well, that's joining a us very soon. Good question for him, probably, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I'll be listening with, a, <laughs> with intent. <laughs> Bob Spears, and that uh, Tom Robinson will be joining us very shortly, but uh, Bob Spears also asks, what injuries to players have been the biggest blow to the campaign so far? I'm not too sure whether that's just in regards to name-wise, but what's made things complex for you guys to make up your rosters on a, due oh, to an injury? Look, two of our... our, our you know, are probably well known and, and top quality players that have had injuries was Caleb Clark and 
um, Stephen Perfetta. You know, they're both outstanding players in our pre-season and, and had trained really well through there. So to, to pick up those injuries um, when they did it as the season was starting was, was unlucky for them because um, they were really looking forward to a big year. So, you know, fingers crossed we see them both on the field again soon. Excellent. And we'll just have time for one more question for head coach uh, Leon McDonald. And this is from Essie Tevi. And can Leon jump in at fullback? Uh, I tried to play touch today and, and my Achilles just hung in there for the, sort of, the 15 minute game. So it might be a stretch. We'll better bet with Tanui Money. He's still running around like a, like a teenager. So uh, I don't know if he plays fullback or not, but he's going pretty well. Excellent. Mm. And just to cap things off, uh, another big uh, clash and looking uh, to go three in a row against the Stormers this Saturday night. What's the main focus points for the Blues to try and get uh, that third straight win? Oh, we've just been working hard on being better every week. Um, and then basically that's simply it. We just kept working and working uh, on the fundamentals of the game, you know, our, our set piece, our defence, um, and our organisational attack and, and, and the core skills. So every week we just go about being better and if we do that, you know, we're going to give ourselves a chance. Excellent. Leon McDonald, thank you so much for joining us on BTV and answering the questions that everybody's itching to know. Mm, pleasure to be here, thank you. Excellent. It's head coach for the Blues, uh, Leon McDonald. And we did make mention that Tom Robinson will be joining us. He's about to take his seat. He is Blues number 291, started every game this season and made the most of every minute, all bar 10, that he's played so far this season. And it was a standout performance. Uh, to seal the deal against the Highlanders on Saturday night. Tom Robinson, thanks, man, joining us here on BTV. I asked the question of the coaching staff. They look major stressed in that last five minutes. It was the opposite for you. It looks like you were loving it, uh, the intensity out there. What was that game like and then the feeling amongst the players uh, to, to get that win? Yeah, I think uh, it was huge afterwards. I was, I was pumped. Um, and just, yeah, it's obviously been a bit of a hurdle for us to, to get over and to, to, to accomplish that. And um, I think we just had a few sort of tough results to start with where it could have gone either way. So to be on our side of it was, um, yeah, it was good. I was stoked. Nice, man. Now, you've come back from a very serious injury, started every game, and the way that you play, you just hoe into everything. How do you keep your body healthy during the week in between games? Uh, yeah, I like to get into a bit of yoga. Yoga? Sort of Lululemon, active wear on, you know, <laughs> my tights. Um, and I've got a, so yeah, do a bit of that. And then I've got a um, sort of get out surfing for a little van called, called Susie, that's her name. Or Susan if she's misbehaving. <laughs> and um, so I get do that or um, uh, to mentally refresh a part of a band. It's called 999 megabytes because we'll never get a gig. And uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of us. We've, we've, we've gone straight to the top of the charts. So, um, yeah, if you want to see us, we're, we're, pre we're prepared to go live one day, maybe. <laughs> that might be the next BTV. It might yeah. be their big debut. But um, it's good to see that it seems like you're keeping yourself active outside of uh, the football ranks. But what's it like being a part of the Blues environment in 2019? Uh, it's awesome. It's um, it's just it's different. Like preseason, you get sort of six weeks where you just you're not playing on 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 the weekends, and so you've just got time and you've got all the resources, all the facilities, just to to get better and um, a bunch of good guys. So yeah, it's good. It's awesome. Any work ons for you personally? Um, it looks as though you just play every game minute by minute that you just get stuck in. But is there any kind of focus for things that you want to work on over the next little bit, especially in this crucial period for the Blues? Yeah, probably just working on um, sort of my running lines and stuff out wide. It's sort of a bit different going from lock where you just sort of sort of in the tight, and then so we, when you're out in the loose, and then. Um, just working on dominance, putting some bumpers on maybe. You know? <laughs> and then I wouldn't mind running, playing second five maybe. Oh yeah. Sunny outside, so, so it's just another, work on that. It's yeah. that consideration, Ma, Tom, yeah, SBW. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Now, lastly, uh, it's a big, uh, again, we mentioned it a bunch of times, uh, taking on the Stormers at Eden Park, but it's also big because it's club night. So this is the opportunity for everybody to celebrate where their roots from. So which club are you representing? I'm, uh, I've got a couple of clubs actually. So um, at the moment I'm with the mighty Kiri Kiri Oranges. Nice. From up in Kiri Kiri, yeah. Great team. And then played a lot of club footy when I was at uni here with the, the Varsity, Varsity Vipers. So I might see if I can get one sock on each foot or something. <laughs> just keep everyone happy. Awesome, man. And just yeah. lastly, again, with that game, it's a big celebration of club football, but it is a big important game for you guys to try and go uh, uh, get the three-peat uh, three in a row. Big Stormers pack, does that change or does that excite you even more so that you get to get to get stuck in? Yeah, mate, it's just exciting. 
yeah, some some big boys, but the old saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall <laughs> on you usually, but <laughs> it's all good, <laughs> should be good. Man, we look forward to seeing you out there doing your thing, we look forward to seeing the recording uh, career coming up as well, <laughs> yeah. and their pro surfing career, so Tom Robinson, yeah. man, you've been a real breath of, breath of fresh air for the uh, all the fans there watching, so looking forward yes. to get, you getting out there and doing your thing on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's um, so again, Stormers this Saturday night at Eden Park, 7:35, and it is the first of a double hitter at Eden Park, where they'll take on the Waratahs the following Saturday, 7:30. So, with that said, if you want to keep up to date with everything that's happening with the Blues, you can go to www.blues.co.nz or check out all their social media pages. But we'll see you at Eden Park this Saturday night.